All right, so this is going to be the last subunit for this um, really large um, two-unit um, compilation here of natural resources and the human effect. Um, this is going to be the effects of technology, so let's get to it. Our objectives are going to be to describe the impact of energy producing technologies on the environment and the acquisition of natural resources, and then to explain how energy producing technologies impact land fertility and aquatic viability. So aquatic viability is just um, like how much um, you can use in an aquatic ecosystem. So like um, good parts of an aquatic ecosystem, parts that are usable. All right, so natural resources and technology. Um, Non-renewable resources account for a majority of energy production. This is a quiz question. Um, it's non-renewable resources. They account for a majority of energy production. That's going to be fossil fuels like oil, coal, natural gas, and nuclear energy is also a non-renewable because they have uranium. Um, and then nuclear energy is also through the process of fission. We're not quite to fusion yet. But this is also another quiz question. Nuclear energy is a non-renewable resource because we have to mine the uranium. So let's get to renewable energy resources. Um, we've got biomass and biofuels that's going to be using crop residues, vegetation, animal oils, um, switchgrass, hybrid poplars, and hybrid willows. These are essentially like genetically modified and grown to produce um, a good amount of energy when they are um, combusted. So when they when we're, they're lit on fire or exploded in very small <clears throat> um, arenas like an engine, then it pr uh, creates a pretty good amount of energy. So pretty comparable to fossil fuels, not quite there yet. Um, geothermal energy, it uses heat from the earth to produce electricity. There's no after effect. There's no pollution with geothermal energy. There's no residuals. It, it, we just use the heat and we turn it into steam from water, um, and then we just produce electricity by turning um, turbines, which turn generators. We've got hydroelectric, which uh, is using the natural movement of water to produce energy. That's going to be dams, so we use gravity, essentially. Um, and then we've got hydrokinetic, which we use waves and tides. We use the kinetic energy of water. So um, we have generators and turbines that get pushed through um, like wave action or tide, tidal action, and that's going to spin the turbine, which spins the generator, which goes to long power lines. Then we've got our classic wind power and solar power. Um, with solar power, we've got active, which is PV or photovoltaic. That converts the sunlight just directly into um, from DC energy to AC energy. And then we've got passive energy from solar power, which that's just um, you're heating something up, you're using that heat to um, turn a turbine. That's usually through steam. So here's a hydroelectric dam. We've got this reservoir buildup behind the dam. We've got like a little intake, intake sieve right here. Um, these or sluice, sorry, sluice gates. These sluice gates are uh, opened or closed depending on how much energy they need or how much water is being put into the system. It goes down through here through gravity. Um, Gravity pulls the water down because it always goes through the path of least resistance. It turns a turbine right here, which will in, um, then turn a generator, which creates electricity in this powerhouse, which ends up going to long distance power lines. And that's how we get a lot of our energy. Um, and then that's just going to go right through a river. Um, so let's talk about some environmental impacts of our technology. Waste and disposal is a big one. Fossil fuels, nuclear waste, batteries, biomass waste, all that stuff um, is a bunch of waste that we um, kind of put into the system due to our technological advancements. Then there's water usage and pollution. So as we know, many, many technologies use water to produce electricity. So we're going to talk about like nuclear energy, hydroelectric, hydrokinetic, um, even geothermal is going to use water. Any type of energy where we're heating something up and turning it into steam, we need water for that steam. So um, in the case of nuclear power plants, water pollution t returns to the natural environment in some cases. Um, that's mainly nuclear power plants. They return altered water to the natural environment. So it's going to be hot. It's going to have a lot of salts in it and a lot of heavy metals. Um, that is not natural for most environments. 
So it's going to really screw things up for animals and plants physiologically. So their, their internal mechanisms get changed. Um, and then we've got leaching of waste into the groundwater. This is a huge one. Um, storm drains, drains, we talked about in the last one, that's going to cause a lot of leaching of waste into the groundwater. But we've also got fossil fuels like oil, gas, um, uranium is a big one, and etc. There's There's pretty much no end to those leaching wastes. So impacts continued. Um, technologies require a lot of land space. So especially with biofuel plants, they require agricultural land. So every time you, you turn um, an agricultural farm into a biofuel plant, you're reducing the amount of food that's going to be available for a population, but you are also increasing um, the amount of viable energy. So you know there's a give and take there. Um, and then mining. Mining for uranium and mining for fossil fuels. To get those fossil fuels, we got to go down below the surface and mine that stuff out. And I don't care what anybody tells you, um, fracking, mining, whatever uh, practice they want to use to get that oil, it is always going to be detrimental to a system. If you go into 300 million year old rock beds and you drill a hole into it, that's going to detriment the system, no matter what. No matter what anybody says about, you know, this isn't such a bad form of mining, blah, blah, blah. It's always going to detriment the system, no matter what. Um, it may not detriment it as much as, say, um, strip mining, where you just take a lot of the, the side of a mountain away, but it's still detrimenting the system. So that's something to think about. Um, don't give in to um, when people hand you these small little intellectual caveats saying, oh, well, you know, it's, it's not as bad as this. That still means it's bad. So, you know, things to think about, especially as a, a person in this, this new society here. So we've got uh, erosion. That's going to be through, like, hydroelectric power. That creates riverbed erosion. Um, and then landfills for waste disposal, that's going to create erosion, and it's also going to create pollution as well. Um, biomass, it provides a lot of habitats for wildlife. So even though we reduce agricultural land, we increase um, wildlife land. It improves the water quality, it improves the soil quality, and it decreases erosion. So this erosion is going to be what's leading to um, water quality decreases and soil quality decreases. So with a decrease in erosion, you see these um, uh, increases in quality of water and soil, and even air. So here is just showing you the effects of erosion from a hydroelectric dam. So here's 1987. The river bank is well formed, well maintained, it kind of meanders along, but there's not much erosion going on. Here's 2006, all this area is eroded now, um, this whole area is eroded now. It's just causing a lot of um, erosion, sedimentation, and deposition in areas where it normally would not occur. And then all throughout here, this whole area is eroded and then deposited with sedimentation. So that's going to alter the aquatic environment quite a bit. So, energy productions and emissions. We all know about CO2 emissions. Um, that comes from fossil fuel combustion and biomass combustion as well. But, like I said before, since um, the plants that were created to make this biomass um, sequestered carbon from the atmosphere to grow, that's kind of, uh, it negates the, the uh, emissions combustion effect. So they, they took in all that CO2 that they're putting out so technically, when we burn it, we burn less um, CO2 than was, in, uh, was taken in or sequestered from those plants. So biomass is actually pretty good for emissions. Um, this is the thing. This is going to be on the quiz here. Nitrogen and sulfur emissions. You're going to get that from coal. So coal is a big one. Coal has carbon dioxide emissions, nitrogen emissions, sulfur emissions, mercury emissions, all sorts of bad emissions. Coal is bad. Um, it's good for energy, cheap energy, but bad for the environment if you burn it. And then biomass combustion as well. That's going to release nitrogen and sulfur, okay? So that's a quiz question. Remember that. Biomass isn't perfect. It releases sulfur and nitrogen and CO2, but it sequesters CO2. Um, so wind farms. Okay, wind farms are fast-growing worldwide. They're like, it's one of the best forms of renewable energy. They could be high, more highly utilized, but um, they create no emissions or pollution. After you've built it, that's it. They're done. They're just creating energy. The only problem is you need a lot of land space for wind farms. Um, they, that can be worked around. They can be placed on farms or pretty much any other area with space and a good wind supply. So 
they're really not that bad for land use. Um, one thing that people talk about is bird mortalities on wind farms. Yes, birds do die on wind farms, but um, it's, it's fake news. So here's just all the different places you can put wind farms. In the ocean, right in front of a coal plant, in a, a nice little meadow, um, on a mountainous forested cliff, in a desert. So wind farms can be everywhere. Um, the, the problem is just tr getting long power lines to transfer that energy to certain systems. So that's what they're working at now. And then here's just nice little fake news blip for you. Um, so Donald Trump, he basically said that uh, wind farms are, are killing birds. You know, he's saying, why aren't you looking at birds being killed at wind farms? Yes, birds are killed. But 599 million birds are killed by flying into windows like, um, you know, big skyscrapers. And then uh, 234,000 birds are killed by wind farms. So 234,000 versus 599 million. And then here you see 2.4 billion birds are killed by cats in the U.S. alone. Okay, so wind farms right here, cats right here. So if that's going to be his argument for not having wind turbines, um, he probably needs to figure out the data. So let's talk about water and energy production. Um, water and energy production disturb aquatic ecosystems. So we talked about hydroelectric power, um, the damming of lakes and the rivers. Um, a good example is the Southern California rainbow trout. I'll talk about it on the last slide. Um, essentially, it stops the natural flow of water. It increases riverbed erosion and aquatic life is unable to function normally. Um, these are things that have had millions of years to function in the area that they are functioning in, and we come in and change it drastically in 10 years. So they don't have time to, to fix or adapt. Um, nuclear energy production, we talked about how the water is returned to the environment altered. It decreases water quality and viability, which is just like good water. Hydrokinetic energy has the potential to dis disturb or endanger aquatic life. Um, you know, just imagine a bunch of, like, fish going into a turbine. That's just going to kill all those fish. So um, that's a really easy example there. We've got oil drilling, so offshore drilling, fracking, and even oil transport spills like the Exxon Valdez, or Valdez, excuse me. Um, that's going to cause pollution. And then biomass. What biomass does is it increases water qual quality near crop growth. The combustion of it uses water, so the contaminants um, from that combustion are going to be released into the environment when the water is returned uncleaned. Um, and then here is just the Exxon Valdez oil spill. This guy was drunk. He, he ran his oil tanker aground and then spilled all this oil into the environment. So here is just like a little teeny ship um, trying to suck up all that oil. It's not going to happen. And then here's just what happens. You know, animals die. Um, the environment gets destroyed. Soil and energy production is another big one. So energy production wastes. They decrease soil quality when wastes are carried to nearby agricultural areas. Um, nuclear production can release contaminants into the surrounding ecosystems. We've talked about all of this stuff here. Landfills and mining, that decreases land fertility. We should all know why. And uh, biomass, that's going to increase soil conservation, but it depletes soil nutrient supply sometimes. So um, we have one plant in that certain area that's a biomass fuel, it's using up like nitrogen, say. Um, it's just going to use all that nitrogen up in the soil. Um, you're going to need to fertilize it, and there's just going to be a lot of excess phosphorus in the system. So it's, the nutrient supply gets kind of screwed up from biomass. So our last thing we're going to talk about is the Southern California steelhead trout. Um, steelhead are rainbow trout, but they're just ready to go into the ocean. So they go through a physiological change where they look differently. Um, we saw a 90% decrease in run size in the Southern California steelhead trout. Their populations disappeared in some areas, and the decline in population was partly due to dams inhibit inhibiting spawning grounds and migratory routes. So these fish are really picky about where they come back to and where they spawn. They need gravel, they need slow moving water, all sorts of stuff like that. So the dams really screwed that up. Um, overfishing as well is really bad. So here's just, um, just, just kind of interesting here. Here's a steelhead, here's a rainbow trout. You can see they, they get these long noses and long jaws to fight off other steelhead because um, they're mating. And then here's a, a live steelhead and a live rainbow trout. They're the exact same thing. 
They just went through a change before going into the ocean.